Some important ingredients to have are yeast, calcium chloride, sodium alginate, sucrose, and the glucose color strips. Here are some other very important materials needed for this experiment. The first step is to weigh out 0.4 grams of sodium alginate. Watch out, this might be tricky. Almost there. Boom. Then add the sodium alginate to 10 mils of distilled water in a 100 ml beaker. Make sure to stir well. The next step is to weigh out 2 grams of yeast. Add the yeast to 10 mils of distilled water in a 100 ml beaker. Make sure to stir well. As sometimes the mixture may appear a bit clumpy. Like so. Make sure you keep mixing until the solution turns smooth. Our next step is to get a solution with 1.4% calcium chloride. To do this, we will weigh out 1.4 grams of calcium chloride and we'll add it to 100 mils of water. Our lab attendant does it again. Bang on. measuring out the water, Yo! it's very important that you view it at eye level so you can get a good indication of where the measurement is. How about a round of applause for one of our lab attendants who's doing such a great job. Okay children, quiet down. Add the calcium chloride to the water and make sure to stir well and this will give you a 1.4% solution. Add the yeast suspension to the sodium alginate solution and mix thoroughly with a glass rod. This immobilizes the enzymes. Draw all of the mixture into a 20 ml syringe. of 10 centimeters release the mixture from the syringe one drop at a time into the calcium chloride solution beads containing these cells will form this is because the calcium chloride hardens the sodium alginate when finished leave the beads to harden for at least 10 minutes While the beads are left to harden, it's important that we create an enzyme which is not immobilized. To do this, we must mix 2 grams of yeast in 10 ml of distilled water, and then add this yeast suspension into a separating funnel labeled free yeast. Adding the yeast to the separating funnel may seem like an easy job, but be careful, because often it's a lot more difficult than it looks. Okay kids, quiet down, it can happen to anyone. Let's give our lab attendants another turn. Excellent job, I think she deserves a round of applause. Two separating funnels will be set up side by side, one containing the immobilized enzyme and one containing the free yeast. have been left for 10 minutes it is important to filter them through a sieve and rinse with distilled water. The beads will then be added into the empty separating funnel. So 
this separating funnel contains the immobilized yeast. No other stirrer is placed in the separating funnel with the immobilized yeast. This is to prevent the beads from clogging up the bottom of the separating funnel. For the next procedure, we need to create a 1% sucrose solution. To do this, we weigh out 1 gram of sucrose. And this will be added to 100 ml of water. Pour 50 ml of the sucrose solution into each separating funnel. Using glucose test strips, immediately test samples from each funnel for glucose. Repeat the test at 2 minute intervals until glucose appears in both. Make sure to record your results. It is important to place a beaker under each funnel to record the turbidity of the solutions from both funnels. This is basically how cloudy the solution is. Replicate the investigation or cross reference your results with other groups. Okay, that about wraps up our experiment kids. Did you enjoy it? Oh you guys! <laughs>